Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Zach, and this week we're going to continue where we left off in a previous video where we created a video gallery for a streaming video website. But this time, we're going to integrate our platform with a true streaming video platform uh, in order to overcome some of the limitations that we encounter towards the end of that video, which we'll recap in just a moment. Um, but for this week, we're going to integrate with Mux.com. Mux.com is one of the premier video st uh, streaming platforms out there. There's there's many like Cloudflare Stream and, and there's several others popping up as well. We're not sponsored by Mux.com, we're just fans. So we're going to choose that platform and integrate it into the Wraitha platform to overcome some of the challenges that we faced at the end of the last video. So this is where we left off last time. Here's kind of the video gallery. We only have one video in here currently. I'm going to click view video. Here is the video that pops up with a description along with the creator and duration, things like that. However, the limitation that we ran into is that this video is just a raw uploaded MP4 file. And so that is going to cause issues if you have a high traffic website where you might just get crushed on bandwidth costs because people are downloading every single time a full video on every page load. You'll also run into issues if the visitor's browsers are not able to play an MP4 video. So you may need to have it encoded into multiple different formats and the player that is used to actually show the video to the visitor should be smart enough to choose the appropriate format and have it played so that there's no other kinds of issues. There's other benefits to using a streaming video platform like being able to skip ahead, thumbnails at the bottom, all sorts of great stuff that we can't use just by uploading and showing a raw MP4 video to the visitor. All right, well, here's Mux.com. To save time, I already went ahead and created an account and manually uploaded the video that we're experimenting with. The free version of Mux will allow up to 10 seconds of video and put a logo on it for testing purposes. So just be aware of that when you're doing your initial testing. But this is the video, and there's a couple interesting things that we need from it, such as the public playback ID. We also have conveniently thumbnails that we can make use of to replace the thumbnails that we have manually put on our platform. So we can take a look at that as well. But then they have this handy new feature here called integrate now with Mux player. We're going to click that. We're going to copy the code that they provided here. And then we're going to go into the Wraith of templates where we last put in the custom templates for showing the video. We're going to click edit. And then if you see here, we have our video tag, but we don't really need that video tag anymore if we're going to make use of the Mux video player. So I'm gonna paste in that code and then I'm going to comment out this old video code. We might wanna re reference it later though. Now keep in mind, we hard coded the video and the playback ID at this time, but I like doing this just to see how it looks, just so we solve the actual template challenge before we wire it up and do a full on integration. Let's publish our changes, head back over to our video, refresh the page, and look at that. You see it is using the mux.com video player, and it's also using the video that we uploaded to mux because it's only 10 seconds and has the logo on top of it. This is great though, it already comes out of the box with hovering over and seeing image previews of the storyline, along with all the other kind of skip ahead functionality that you would hope for out of a streaming video engine. Back here in templates, we don't wanna hard code this anymore because if we add more videos, we want to play the video that we've uploaded, not the same video, no matter which video we uploaded. So what we're gonna do is copy this playback ID. We're gonna use it later for, for some testing. But let's go to videos, our content type, settings, fields, and we want to create a new field. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna label this the mux dot, we'll just call this the mux playback ID, just like that. Field type, single line text, it's not required. And we'll go to the video that we've been using for testing purposes and we'll plug in the ID here. Click save and publish. Let's go back to templates, back to the one we've been editing. And instead of hard coding it in, let's insert the variable for the mux playback value. Let's do that right there. Publish changes. And 
we shouldn't see anything break at this point. Nope, we're still good and it achieved our objective. So now it's no longer hard coded, it's pulling the playback ID that we saved as part of that item in the custom content type. If we wanted to, we could also update these and insert variable for the video title, as well as the current user ID, which you could technically do through this. Let's head back over to video. We're going to pause here and recap what we've achieved so far. We've successfully linked up the Wraitha templates to playing videos from the Mux.com streaming video player using that playback ID that Mux provided us. However, at this point, we've really pushed the Wraitha platform as far as we can out of the box. And we're going to need to open up Visual Studio and start writing some C-sharp code. The reason being is that as an administrator, if you open up your video to edit and upload a video that you want to show up on the website. The system as it currently stands doesn't know to send the video to mux.com and get that playback ID and populate it into that custom field. We did all of this manually as a proof of concept just so we can see the video playing on our platform. But now we're gonna need to write some code to link it all together. Okay, we're in Visual Studio now. I promise you, it's not that bad. If you're a C-sharp developer, a lot of this will feel very natural to you. The first thing that we need to do is set up an event handler that responds to a content item created event. You may actually want to add another notification for content item updated in case the video is changed after the fact, but you can go ahead and take that as a take home exercise. But we have a content item created event and we're going to use the file storage provider. We're going to use a streaming video provider, which I create. So you have the file storage provider, which is provided by Raytha out of the box. And you also have the database, which is provided by Raytha. But this streaming video provider is an interface that I created. And this is the code to handle the response to a content item created event. So we're getting the content item ID of the item that was just published, the content type ID. And we want to see if the content type is of the post type, which is what this code is doing right here, because I didn't add that video field to any of the other content types that we have just to the post type. So we don't need to take any action unless it is already the post type. And this developer name is what we've defined when we've created the content type and we called it posts. We're then getting the object key out of the content item that was published, which is how we know where to get the file. And then we're calling our file storage provider to get the download URL of that object key. Now I have this hooked up to my Azure Blob account, but you might be using Amazon S3 or maybe even local storage. I'm then calling the create asset function on the streaming video provider. Again, that's what I created. We'll show that in a moment. And I'm getting back the playback ID from mux.com. I'm setting the value to the field here, and then I'm getting the item from the database again, updating it, both the published and draft content, and then updating it in the database. So that's really it for the actual event handler. But then I promised to show you that I created the iStreaming video provider. That's a interface that I just created with a single method. And I put that here under Raytha.application, common interfaces, and iStreaming video provider right here. And you see that I put my event handler for streaming video event handler under an event handler handlers directory with the content item. So it's all neatly organized and kept together. Now, following best practices, we actually want to have the implementation for the iStreaming video provider interface under Raytha.infrastructure, and there's a directory here for services, and I created a service called Mux, which implements the iStreaming video provider. The reason this is a best practice is that if you want to switch away from mux.com as your streaming video provider to something else like Cloudflare Stream, all you would need to do is add another file here called Cloudflare Stream that implements the same interface and you don't need to rewrite any of your code at the upper layers that we were just looking at. But here is the mux implementation and I kept it super simple looking at their API documentation. Uh, we have a token ID and token secret which I put into 
into my app settings and I'm grabbing that from the configuration handler. Uh, we have their endpoint and then we're serializing a mux payload. So we're just following their documentation, what they suggested in terms of serializing the JSON, posting it to the video assets endpoint and getting the response. And here I parsed out the playback ID and I returned it back to the event handler over here. Now that the code is written, let's demo it live and see if it works. All right, we're back in Raytha. I'm going to create a video. We'll choose the video detail template. Second video. Now we're going to save and publish. You can see that the Mux playback ID populated right away, which means that we can go to our live website, head over to videos. We have our second video here. I click into view video and it has worked exactly as we would have liked. So that wraps up our video for today. We successfully integrated a video streaming platform, Mux.com, into our .NET application using the Raytha platform, getting all of that functionality out of the box and then writing a little bit of .NET code to tie it all together. I hope you found that helpful and insightful and that you check out Raytha, subscribe to the channel to see more videos similar to this one. Stay tuned for the next video and have a great day.